everyone, it's Maggie Bot, and tonight we're going to do my top 10 most anticipated from the Essen preview list. Uh, Eric Martin painstakingly puts every game he knows will be on at Essen onto the preview on Board Game Geek, and so I went through and I classified them using their new tool, which is lovely, as must-haves, intersteds, uh, I can't remember the third one, and then not interested. Um, I think it's undecided. Uh, for me, because of how much I just want to play all the things, um, if I had done most must-haves and interested, this video would have lasted three hours, so I instead just ranked all of my must-haves from 1 to 44. Uh, I'm just going to give you the top 10. Not sure if you want the rest of the list. I can link it to you. I can give it to you however you like. But we are going to just go to town. But first, before I do that, I wanted to uh, go over the seven games I own on this spiel preview that you should look at if you have not already. So, and these are in my like must-haves, played, love them, oh my god, you need them. So, number seven, Sakura Arms. Uh, AEG is bringing out this really cool little card fighting game. Um, they've had a really good time in Japan with this game because actually the OP and kind of tournament runs for it got really popular. For me, I just like two-player card fighting games, and it's really beautiful and cool and really well done. Um, number six is Import Export, which is um, a game I backed on Kickstarter. It's kind of like a love marriage of container and like a like glory to Rome. <laughs> it's a lot of cards and a lot of things going on. It's going to be for a very specific taste, but it's part of mine. Uh, number five is Yokohama, which is from Hisashi Hayashi again. Uh, Yokohama is a really neat Euro that you could play with almost anyone. Fits lots of different player counts. Um, number four is Lisboa uh, from Vital Lacerda. Big, heavy Euro. What's not to love? Play a card, do a thing. Uh, number three is Sideral Confluence from Tessetti and WizKids. Um, big real-time trading game. You can trade anything on the table except for victory points, and it's just a lot of fun and really cool and very async, uh, asymmetrical. Uh, number two is the second edition of London came out. And number one is The Burr from Capstone Games. So I went through that really fast. If you'd like more explanation of any of those, please leave a comment below. But let's get to my anticipated list here. You ready? All right, at number 10, we have the Gaia Project. Uh, Gaia Project is basically Terra Mystica in space. Um, the whole team that did Terra Mystica has come together to do this Gaia Project. And what I think that they've done is take something like Terra Mystica, something like the expansion, and then drilled in a little less async, uh, asymmetrical abilities and focused a little bit more on the one and two player experience. I'm really excited to see what happens. Um, I got to peek over someone's shoulder as they were playing this at Gen Con. I didn't really love the graphic design, but I tend to not like, I don't know how else to say it, but space fonts. I just don't like their look. They're all square and boxy and weird, and I don't care for it. So it just is a personal aesthetic thing, but aesthetics have never really stopped me from playing a game with a few exceptions. Um, it looks really neat, and it was definitely on sale. It's uh, Führer Landspiele. Um, I believe it's still going to be Z-Man in the States, but I've got like a million different publishers listed here, Crania Creations and all them. Next was Windake from Placentia Games and Postscriptum. Uh, I actually backed this on Kickstarter. I did a whole group by here in um, Seattle, so we all have copies coming and we're going to do a little release party. Um, there's two things about this game. An incredibly respectful use of theme for a tribe of people that generally get overlooked or washed together into this giant gross thing of Native Americans. And it has a really cool action selection mechanism, and I thought that the two of those plus Placentia games meant I absolutely needed this. Uh, Placentia previously had done Kepler and Florenzia, and Florenza is absolutely one of my favorite longer Euros, so I'm excited to see this one, even though it's a little shorter. Next is Teotihuacan. I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, City of the Gods. This is the spiritual successor to Sulkin. Uh, it's being published by NSK and Games. Uh, I'm so excited about this one. Apparently you have dice workers and um, as you go those workers kind of level up or get stronger and you're trying to 
by upgrade and by like bonus actions and so it sounds very combo-y and fun and very much my thing. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, next is Guilds. Uh, this is first to time designer Christian Giove. Christian was a game reviewer out in Italy for a really long time and this year I believe he has two games at Essen. This one on a game called Origami. This one seems to have been picked up by Asmodee, Galacta out in Poland, Gioki Unite, and um, I foresee this being a bigger game than you think. Um, the Spiel Preview had like three different copies of it because it's being translated into so many uh, different languages. And whenever a reviewer goes game designer, I always think they had to have gotten something stuck in their brain, right? Because you're just you're doing your reviews, you're doing your thing. He wrote like this giant magazine and he must have just like, this game doesn't exist, it really needs to. And I feel like that's like a driving force for him. So I'm always willing to play that driving force game, even if it's not the best game ever. It will definitely have something to it. Now, this game actually sounds really neat. Um, you, basically, all of you are meeting in the town square and trying to bring artisans into um, your your house. You're like a craftsman, a master craftsman. And so there's a lot of things that you need to do to entice them every round. And it just looks really fun. Um, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. I will definitely be picking up a copy. Um, next is another one I already backed on Kickstarter. This is Dinosaur Island. Uh, this is from John Gilmore and Brian Lewis. Um, I got a chance to play this online on, I think it was Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. I can never remember which one, but it's a really fun one where you uh, kind of build out your Jurassic Park-like uh, park of attractions and dinosaurs and every round you're gonna be pulling these uh, attendees out of a bag and some of the attendees are good and some of them aren't some of them run away without paying you and so there's a lot of mitigation with the bag and the attractions and building things up it all has this 80s pastiche from Quan Chai Mariah um, so I, I love the look and it's a hot pink it's a very expensive game but I have like the deluxe version coming and so um really looking forward to getting a, a, a hands-on look at this game especially those dice i give me some hot pink dice any day um clans of caledonia this is another one i literally have my shipping notice and i should be getting this game any day uh this is from new karma games and um it has been said that it is terra mystical like uh, I think that's because you build different things on boards and you get resources, but everyone's you know trying to say it's you know the terroristic killer, but it's a mid to heavy economic game that sounds great to me. Let's build up some stuff and find some best paths and try and optimize and that's all for me. Next is Pulsar twenty eight forty nine. This is Vladimir Suki who previously has only made games I love. Um, one of my favorite games, Shipyard, is actually his, and it was largely overlooked by the general population because it's very long, very hard to learn, a little bit dry, a little bit weird art, and the components are not great. <laughs> it kind of checked all those boxes. This is Check Games Edition again, but the, the art and the components look a little bit more approachable because it's set in space, and people love space themes. There's something about them that people just love. But this one um, reminds me a little bit, there's a game from Galactica called Andromeda, and uh, in this one you roll the dice and then everyone drafts the dice, and what you're trying to do is um, basically pick out and make your tech track go as far as you can without drafting too many dice because that's going to further the game, and it just looks really neat and it looks definitely like my kind of game. Uh, number three. We have Merlin from Steffenfeld and Michael Reinick. This is a queen game. Love it or hate it, they keep getting Steffenfeld games. Uh, I just have to hope that there's more development on this one than America. Uh, Merlin is big, rondel looking fun. And uh, there's lots of ways of defeating barbarians and scoring points and um, use dice around an action ring and so that's really all I needed to know in life was felled in an action ring. 
Um, that's me, not you. Don't forget. <laughs> I know a lot of people have things to say, but I am excited. Um, next is Kepler3042. So I mentioned before that Placentia Games is kind of an auto buy for me. I don't know if I made it in this take, but definitely Placentia Games is an auto buy for me. They have an eye for heavy euros that is not usual or found elsewhere. Um, and so Kepler 42, 3042 is coming out, but Renegade Game Studios actually purchased the design and um, reskinned it with some beautiful Quan Chi Mariah art. Uh, this was a game I regretted very much not purchasing before when it was available. And uh, so when I heard Renegade was doing it, I literally had to take it out of a shopping cart I had put it into because it was my birthday and I was going to buy a copy for myself. Um, so I've been waiting for this one for a long time. And it's a resource management game. There's not a lot of combat as far as I know. It's more exploring and colonizing and um, using resources and gaining things. Uh, so I'm very, very excited about this one. Uh, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> and my number one choice for this year, and this probably will surprise a couple of you, um, that is Charterstone. This is a Jamie Stegmeier uh, legacy game. Uh, it's got a lot of good and bad on the internet. It's got a lot of playtesting done. It's got a lot of people with opinions. But what can I say? Uh, this is the first of the legacy games to really go after the Eurogamer. And so I'm going to eat that up with a spoon. Sure. Pander to me. Put pumpkin chits in there. I'm totally going to eat that up. Uh, I have played a little Pandemic Legacy. I played a little Gloomhaven. I played a little of this and that and this and that. I, I played them all, right? But none of them were Euro. None of them were really the kinds of things I like to do. So if this one is going to tempt me that way, I am in. Uh, Watch It Played very recently put out his video. So Rodney Smith put out his video of how to play it. And um, I am so excited about this one. This is definitely one I pre-ordered early. I, um, I will can't tell you, but I, I might have to play this solo. I don't have a group for it yet. But it is less stringent than the others. It's one to six players instead of the two to four where you really, really want four. And so we'll see if anyone else wants to kind of make a regular game of it with me. But if not, I'll just play the darn thing by myself. <laughs> All right, that's my top 10. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I love you all. Bye. Hi, friends. It's new to disclosure time. Um, I started working for a company called PSI, and PSI works in between publishers and distributors to get games into distribution the way that they want to be, and um, so some companies that I mention or that I don't mention directly work with me. At no point does PSI or any of these publishing companies ask me to make opinions on videos. They don't pay me for this. They're literally not involved with my video work. However, it does create bias that you should know about. You should probably also know that most publishers or designers are friends of mine or that I like. So I may want to promote their stuff because I love them. Um, but that, if you didn't have that bias, why would you be in game reviews? I have no idea. But I figured doing this is better than not doing this in case someone discovered it by accident. But no, really, I get paid to help doing sales and marketing into distribution for game companies. That's me. Uh, so, anything else, please leave a comment below if you care to, and it was lovely seeing y'all, bye-bye.